and go out to every land. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. Speak the word and go out to every land. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. May the lives of those we touch sing praise to God above. Let us sing, we'll sing. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of God with all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Take the word to our neighborhoods and streets. Shine the light for Christ for all to see. May we all set out to live in peace and harmony. They will see and sing. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of God with all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Take the word to the people in despair. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. May our actions and our deeds bring comfort to their needs, and they'll know and sing. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of God with all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Take the word to the nations everywhere. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. May the witness of our lives transform the world anew and will shine, will shine. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of God with all power and glory the word of God shall reign. Good morning. It's going to be nice out today. Fill out your registration form, put those in the offering plate. Thanks to Kathy, you get it again. For singing this morning. We really appreciate it. I can't wait to hear her. There is a blood drive Wednesday night in the Kraus room from 3 until 6. They will take walk-ins, but you can also sign up on the appointment by calling the phone number in the bulletin and also going to the website that's there and signing up there as well. Um, Church Women United will be having a potluck at the Moose Lodge on Northern Illinois in Swansea this Friday at 1130. So reservations, you can contact Grace for those. The rose on the altar this morning, and it's an honor of the celebration of Nolan Henry Hill, who is the son of Adam and Nina Hill in New York, the grandson of Wally and Sherry, and they would continue to appreciate your prayers. He was a lot early and way too early, but is um, getting bigger and growing stronger, and we're continuing to keep him in our prayers.
Good morning. If you please rise if you're able to and join me in the call to worship. God looks from heaven upon the children of the earth to see whether there are any wise enough to seek the fellowship of God. To God be all the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for our initial hymn, number 64, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. remain standing, we will go to number 885, our act of worship, a modern affirmation. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare, we believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. may be seated and if the children would join Leanne for a children's time. to join us? Good morning. How are you? Oh, have a seat. Wow, we have a lively bunch. Can you all say good morning to everyone? Say good morning. Good morning. I like that one. You all look like you've been very happy this morning. So, got to tell you, I brought something today. Not noisemakers this time, though, sorry. <laughs> what are these? Yes, bowls. Are they bowls? Yeah. What do we use these bowls for? Cooking. Cook well, I don't know. They're kind of small for mixing yeah. snacks. Yeah. What about, what about if I would cook something too much, and then we'd have to put the leftovers in these bowls and store them? <gasps> what? Chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Chicken noodle soup. We've done that, yes. <laughs> They're storage bowls. They're bowls to hold leftovers. Can I tell you guys a story about some leftovers? Mm -hmm. I had a neighbor who made some steaks on the grill one day, and he says, I don't like leftovers. I don't eat them. And he made too many steaks. And he brought me a steak, and he said, hey, I got a leftover steak. I brought it for your dog. Do, do you think that your dog would like this? And I said, well, absolutely. And you know what? When that neighbor left, I ate it. <laughs> Is that a good one? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you another story. And it's a story that's actually in the Bible. It's in the Bible about Jesus saving leftovers. Let's see. Can you pull that plastic bag off for me, please? This is a story you've all probably heard before. What's this? How many loaves of bread is in there? Five. Five loaves of bread? Yeah, and what's this? There's two fish in there, that's right. Do you think that all of this bread and all of these fish would feed thousands of people? No? Well, let me tell you a little bit about this story, about this bread. There was a Bible story, and it was about Jesus feeding 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said to his friend Philip that it's getting very late. It's getting pretty dark out, and we're going to have to feed all these people. Well, they didn't have enough money to buy all the food. Philip told him, he said, even eight months' worth of wages would not buy enough bread for all these people to have even one bite. 
And so Andrew, another one of Jesus' friends, said, Hey, there's a small boy over there. He's got five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring it to me. And he gave thanks, and he blessed it, and then he started to break it apart and share it with all of the people. And guess what? There was leftovers. There was leftovers. And he had everybody gather all the leftovers, and then they stored them. And what do you think they did with them? They probably saved it for later, or maybe they found some more people that were very hungry. Do you think that those hungry people would have got some of the bread that Jesus blessed? Probably. Do you think that there's a lesson that you can learn from this? Yes, yes there is. It's a story of a little child who was able to share. The child is the one that had the food. And I think that all of you have it in you to share. And you know, this doesn't have to be just about food. It could be your time. It could be your smile. It could be toys. It could be toys, that's right. Anything you have extra that's left over, you can share. Do you think that you can share prayers? Yes. Oh, candy too. I like candy. Would you share your candy with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll share my lipstick, my pink lipstick. Oh, I don't share makeup. You should not share makeup. Okay? That's not good. <laughs> I know, but if it's new, then... Oh, yeah. okay, okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that information. See? You shared. You shared. All right. Can we all bow our heads for prayer? Let's go. Hey, shall we pray? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing these wonderful, adventurous children into our lives. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with one another and to love one another. And we pray that we can all learn from this that even the meekest who has nothing can share something. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's go to Junior Church. Can you... People always uh, talk about sermons being difficult because you have to stand up in front of people and speak or singing like Kathy's going to do here pretty soon, but that is the toughest thing you have to do. <laughs> so I only volunteer for it from time to time because that is a, that's a tough group. <laughs> At least half of you pretend to pay attention. And she did a wonderful job, didn't she? I hope those fish in the bag weren't real, were they, Leanna? They weren't real fish, right? Swedish, okay. Would you join me in prayer? God, it is, uh, it is good to be here with you once again as we come to surround ourselves and wrap ourselves once again in your love and grace. For we need to, to know it and to hear it for ourselves once again. We've gone about our daily lives this week, oh God, and, and we've been pushed down and, and shoved around and uh, chipped away at here and there and everywhere. And sometimes even our faith has been attacked. And yet, O oh God, as we come before you, we know that you are the one who loves us. You are the one who never forgets us. You are the one who speaks our name with joy and, and love. You are the one who's counted the hairs on our heads. And you know us. So once again, oh God, as we come before you, we offer to you those places in our lives that, uh, that we need you. Whether it's our own lives and those places that, uh, that are rough on the edges that need to be smoothed over and, and made clean places in our families' lives or in our community's lives where people need to hear about your son, Jesus. 
but especially, O oh God, we lift up our world to you. We know that there are places in this planet that have not yet heard about you, places where you're not allowed to be spoken of, places where others have turned their backs upon you. Help us, O oh God, that we might continue to proclaim the good news of your son and his life and death and resurrection. Be with us as a church, O oh God, that we might continue to reach out into our communities that we live in, especially this community that we are a part of, to share your love with all. We thank you and praise you for the joy that you give to us as well. As we continue to pray, as your Son has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take the word and go out to every land. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. May the lives of those we touch sing praise to God above. Let us sing, we'll sing. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels will spread the goodness of God with all power and glory. The word of God shall reign. Take the word to our neighborhoods and streets. Shine the light for Christ for all to see. May we all set out to live in peace and harmony. They will see and sing. With one voice we'll pass the word along. With one voice bring justice to the world. And with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of God. With all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Take the word to the people in despair. Shine the light of Christ for all to see. May our actions and our deeds bring comfort to their needs and they'll know and sing with one voice we'll pass the word along with one voice bring justice to the world and with all the angels we'll spread the goodness of god with all power and glory the word of god shall reign take the word to the nations everywhere shine the light of christ for all to see may the witness of our lives transform the world anew and will shine shine with one voice we'll pass the word along with one voice bring justice to the world and with all the angels we'll spread the good
goodness of God with all power and glory, the word of God shall reign. Did you join me in prayer? God, it is so good to be here with you once again, and we ask that uh, as we bring our gifts to you that, and we lay our lives before you, that you might use us as your instruments in this world, for it is in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's just come for our offering. Please remain standing for our hymn. It is on page 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
Please be seated. This morning's scripture reading is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 948 and on page 1817 in the large print version. I will be reading from the Message Bible. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by punishing or pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church, glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus, glory down all the generations, glory through all millennia, oh yes, amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is a shaking, let hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing lives. There is a trembling, there is revival. The sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us. Holy fire fall, come and fill this place with your presence. Like a rushing wind, send your spirit here. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. There is a shaking, let hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing lives. There is a trembling, there is revival. The sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us, holy fire fall. Come and fill this place with your presence. Like a rushing wind, send your spirit here. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, he is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, he is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, he is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, he is holy. Breathe on us, holy fire fall. Come and fill this place with your presence. 
like a rushing wind Send your spirit here Breath of heaven, breathe on us Breathe on us, holy fire fall Come and fill this place with your presence Like a rushing wind Send your spirit here Breath of heaven, breathe on us Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us. Come breathe on us, holy firefall. I love that line. It's beautiful. Thank you. Eugene Patterson writes in the middle of the passage that Nancy read just a few minutes ago. Verse 20 he begins. He says, God can do anything you know. Far more than you can imagine or guess or even request in your wildest dreams. And he doesn't do this by just pushing us around. By, by working within us, his spirit deeply, gently within us. Think about the, the biggest thing, the, the largest endeavor that you've ever come up with, you know. I mean, think about it. It's something that's maybe beyond your wildest imaginations. You want to you own, you own a yacht and you want to travel around the world. I don't know. Think of something. That thing that is just beyond your imagination like you win the lottery. And now remember, gambling is wrong and, and it's against the United Methodist Church's standards. But I will remind you that you do have to tithe 10% if you do win. Because <laughs> when you become famous and it becomes part of the newspaper story, you better at least make it say, oh yeah, but I gave a lot of my money to the church. What do you do with it? When I was five years old, living in Brinfield, Illinois, which is a little town outside of Peoria, it's just a little north on I-74, if you go out that direction, it's a little town, and, and when I was living there back in 1969, they were building the interstate back then, there wasn't an, an, an interstate of 74, so that makes you, you know, that makes me old, right, building interstates? We would go out to the interstate and watch them build, and we would shoot our BB guns at the dirt, you know, walls and all that good stuff. But when I was five years old, I remember getting prepared for my fifth birthday. You know, I mean, five, that is like, that's maturity beyond measure, right? Getting ready to go to kindergarten. I mean, you are, you are something then. I don't remember all the details, but I remember, you know, building it up in my mind that somehow or another this birthday party was going to be the end of all birthday parties because I had arrived. I got a brand new bicycle without training wheels. It had a banana seat. Any of you remember those? I loved my banana seat. I ended up chopping up that sucker and making it into a chopper and then I would ride it over the top of dirt mounds and I end up probably destroying that poor bicycle. My parents probably thought to themselves, well there goes another $50 because Harvey decided to run it over the top of a dirt mound and destroy it. But when you're five you do these things. I had some friends over. One of them was my first girlfriend. You know, five, come on. It's the end of the world. And we played pin the tail on the donkey. I'm not even really sure why we played pin the tail on the donkey. It was a really weird game. Plastic donkey on the wall, you blindfold people, and you t give them a sharp object, and you say, find the donkey. Yeah, that's good for five-year-olds. What a smart thing to do. What is wrong with parents? Probably what's wrong with me today. 
It was beyond my wildest imaginations. Now I think to myself, wow. It becomes easy when we begin to kind of deal, I think, with the world and all of the complexities that we have to deal with to conclude sometimes as we run up against all of the obstacles and all of the walls and all of the things that get in our way of, of really, truly imagining the biggest and grandest things, especially in terms of not just our church life but our faith life. To think that sometimes little is possible because we keep chugging along and things continue to fall backwards and fall backwards and we just continue to go forward. And that change is difficult. That the world is just the way it is because that's just the way the world is. And so we get into that mindset and we get into that understanding and we see the world through those lenses. And we think to ourselves... How can I possibly think that God can do anything when my imagination of what God is is so small? How big is your God? And do you believe that God can do anything? I mean, really, deep down, do you? If you're honest with yourself, you know, you've lived life. Come on. I think it's easier sometimes to even water down our God. We want others to know him, and so therefore we make it an easier sell. We, we, we water down all of the, you know, the do's and don'ts, and we, we kind of make it a kind of an easy kind of a message to people. We say, oh, well, you know, you can do that or you can do that. It's okay. We just want you to show up. Please show up. We want others to like us, and so we kind of shave off the harsh ends of our faith. Let's not rock the boat. Let's not offend anyone. Or we want to create a God who meets our criteria. We shape and form the image of a God and a creator who looks just like us, who acts like us, thinks like us, and has those boundaries and and everything like us. And so therefore, to think that somehow or another the God that we worship can do anything, it's hard for us to imagine because that's not the God that we have created in our imaginations or in our minds or even in our faith. Let's take it one step further in terms of God's power. Yet, far too often, we, we want to treat God as if he's kind of a helper for our plans rather than the other way around. And so we, we try to manipulate God into to following our way. Or we, we, we say to God, well, this is what I need to accomplish, God, and I'm sure that somehow or another you will just make everything go that direction. You'll see it my way eventually. What, though, if we prayed like we really meant for the Holy Spirit to come amongst us, as Kathy just sang. That if we prayed for big and impossible things to take place in Belleville or Shiloh or in the Metro East or, or the United States or the world, and then we waited expect, unexpectedly because of our faith, because we knew a God who is capable of large and extravagant things and miracles beyond our imaginations. What if we truly believed that God can do anything? What would that look like? I believe this is what happens, and it happens in my life, and I've seen it around me as well. We see the world in a certain way, and we have an image of the way it works and all of its possibilities, and then we take our God and we box him up into this little little box, and we say to God, this is how we see God working in the world. When in fact, Patterson reminds us and so does Paul remind us this morning that, that, that God is not like that at all. That beyond our wildest and most extravagant understanding, God is working in the world and in our lives and in his church. That he works within us and through us and around us if we let him. And that God's work is uncontainable and unquestionable. And yet, and yet we try to curtail him. We try to hold him in. 
Paul says elsewhere in Philippians, a passage that I love to recite from time to time, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Do you believe that? So what does this look like? What does it look like for God to do anything? I think it begins and ends with this understanding of our place in it. And it begins and ends with the understanding of humility. Listen, my friends, we are not the end all. We are not all the be. We aren't the center of all of this. And yet our religion and our churches sometimes and even our pastors can get to the point where we think that somehow we are at the center of it and that how, somehow or another Harvey is the one that we need to make sure gets it accomplished or you need to get it accomplished. Or that maybe somehow or another that, you know, the Methodist church will offer us an option. Look at all those amazing people in the Bible that God used. Abraham and Sarah and Moses. John the baptizer, Mary. These were ordinary people. I mean, some of them were just suspect, to say the least. The disciples, my goodness, were a motley group of people. Most of which probably wouldn't have been allowed to sit in our pews today. Because they smelled like fish and looked like what they looked like. But they were amazed at the bigness of their God. They were humbled and they knew their job was to get out of the way and let God do his thing. There were no boxes and no limits. It was just whatever God would do in their lives. You see, for them... And, and what I have come to realize is it's not about my smallness that makes a difference. It's about how big the God I believe in. Louis Giglio writes, he said, Humility is the instant right-sizing of me that occurs with just one eye full of his majesty. So when you put yourself in the understanding of where you are and the big scheme of things and you allow God to do the things that God does that's why Moses when he was confronted with God out there in the desert so long ago if you remember what happened what are the things that kind of gets shuffled to the side there was a burning bush God gave him all these things to do but you remember what Moses did at the beginning he took his shoes off and he threw them to the side and he and God said, take your shoes off, Moses, because you are standing on holy ground. Moses understood the majesty and the, and the largeness of his God. When Peter was washed by Jesus right before his death, you remember Peter was there and, and Peter was doing his usual thing, being Peter. And Jesus begins to wash his feet and and. and, and and Peter says, don't wash my feet, Lord. No, no, I don't deserve this. And Jesus says, I'm going to wash your feet because you need your feet washed. You need to understand your place, Peter. And you remember what Peter said? His response was, okay, then get me all of it, God. Get me all. He began to understand his place and how big his God was. That's why Paul says to us today, God can do anything. If you are in need of hope in your life today, because sometimes it seems senseless, God can do anything you know. If you need a fresh start when you don't think you deserve it, when you think that you have hit the bottom and you don't deserve to go any further, God can do anything you know. When you need a place to turn, when all directions seem meaningless and there is dead ends everywhere you turn, God can do anything you know. When you feel whipped and drained and failing and you are ready to quit and you are just in need, God can do anything you know. You see, 2,000 some years ago, God turned this world upside down on a cross and changed the calculation of everything through his love and his grace and made everything even life everlasting possible and there was nothing 
that would stand in the way of God's love for you. Death was dead. Sin was destroyed. And it is there that Jesus completed the promise that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And reminds us once again that God can do anything. Would you join me in prayer? God, it is often that uh, we look around at our lives, and especially this world that we live in, and we, we ponder what it is that we can do. Use us. Fill us. And send us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you please stand for our last hymn. It is on page 140. Great is thy faithfulness. And then may God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit go and remain with each and every one of us now and forever. Amen.